This is Wallace, which is a subscription tracker that you can self host. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do exactly that. Welcome back to another video, everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you, like I just mentioned, Wellos, which is a subscription tracker. I'm going to be showing you how you can get it all set up, self-hosted using Docker. It's relatively straightforward, so it's not going to be a long video. So the first part is just going to be me walking you through Wellos, how it works, how you can, you know, go about adding subscriptions and all the features that it has. And then on the other half of this video, I'm going to show you how you can get it all set up if you would like that. But all the links are going to be in the description as well to their GitHub, to my documentation, and to their demo site as well. So this is Wellos, and the first thing is why? Why would you want this, right? Well, I feel like subscriptions are one of those things you kind of add and then you kind of forget about it and it's just one of those things that are there, right? And they just add up over time and I feel like since they come in at such a slow pace, you don't understand how much you're actually spending on these things. And that's the whole point of this, right? It's for you to see what you've got and I'll show you in a second how it calculates it and shows you exactly how much you're spending. But let's just have a look at mine for now and we'll kind of cover all the features as we go. So you can see here, these are um, my subscriptions that I have. I'm going to be open and transparent with it. So I have OpenAI, Spotify, Discord, some Apple, uh, Uber One, Netflix, um, if you grew up um when i did runescape look we never <laughs> we never outgrow that uh, we always somewhat come back to it um icloud uh my gym membership nordvpn and i pay for the unraid support yearly and those are my subscriptions now when you look at them like this you go okay yeah like there's a bit there right and you know you can see between yearly and monthly but if we come up into the top right hand corner right and we hit statistics let's see here we go. So straight away, we get an overview on how much I'm spending on my subscriptions. I'm spending $2,300 a year on my subscriptions and nearly $200 a month. Now, I didn't know I was spending this much money. And before this, it was actually a bit high before I decided to get rid of some subscriptions. So as we can see straight away from the statistics window, we have 11 active subscriptions, my monthly cost and my yearly cost. Now, if that's immediately shocking to you, then, you know, it's doing its job and you can adjust. And we can see what the average uh, subscription cost is and what my highest subscription is. And it's open AI. Um, this thing is well worth it to me, so I can justify that cost. And I can also see how much is going to come out this month. Because when you add a subscription, you also put out, you know, when it comes down every month. And if we scroll down, we can see what the split is. So we can see between entertainment, music, and whatnot. Now, the text looks a bit fuzzy, but I've, I'm zoomed in quite a bit. So that's probably why. And then we've also got the payment method. So where this comes out, and you can specify all this. So I say, you know, most of it's coming out of PayPal. Uh, one's on my credit card, and then one's coming off my debit card. And of course, you got your filters. You can filter between the categories if you just want to look at certain categories, as well as a payment method. Let's say you're noticing some charges off the, the credit card or you're getting rid of a credit card and you need to know what you need to swap out. You click credit card and you can see you got one active subscription. But if we come back to subscriptions, we can do that same one. So category, sorry, not category, payment method. And then we can filter it down so we can see, you know, the credit card. There's just one on there, that sort of stuff. Then you have the calendar. This is great, right? So you can see exactly when something's coming out. So what's today? So yeah, tomorrow my open AI is gonna come out. So, you know, I'm aware of that. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Statistics we've already looked at, right? Which is that overview. And then we have the settings, right? So the username for the user. Now you can have multi-users on this, right? So you can share it maybe with friends if you wanna host it with some friends. It's all uh, authenticated by username and password. You could also have it for, you know, your home, uh, you know, friends and family, whatever. You can also set a budget. So you know, hey, look, I only want to spend $50 a month on subscriptions, right? You could put that in here and you can see if you've gone over that budget or not. And the other cool thing is you can set up a household so you can add users to a household. And as you can see here, that the members of the, the household will be notified when subscriptions are about to expire. And you can also set up a bunch of notifications, right? So you can have it email you, letting you know that a subscription is about to come out and you've got all the options here as well. And if you watch my notify video, and if you have that set up, you can definitely use that. Also, when you're setting up a subscription, sometimes the categories don't work for you. Just make your own if you need them or get rid of some if they're not applicable, right? You also have currencies as well. So they've got pretty much majority of the currencies. If they don't have yours, you can add it. So that's the settings. And then if we come under admin, so this is where you can enable user registrations. So by default, um, you can see the link up here as well as .tiktoks.nz. Now this isn't public, I'm just hosting this uh, in my internal network using nginx proxy manager uh, watch my video if you're keen to have internal domain names like this but if i copy this and i've opened up a private browser you can see they just had a login screen if you if they can get to this and then they can click, can click register 
and they can just make an account right and away they go again i'm all like zoomed in so that's why things are kind of looking weird but there we go and you can see here that maximum number of users when it's set to zero it means that it's unlimited so there is no cap so you can definitely set that if you want or you can just turn that off and then people won't be able to get uh people won't have the option to register now if you're wanting to use email verification and having password recovery then you will set up a server url here and you can set all of that up and if you want to create users and stuff you can also do that here as well if you want to make it on someone's behalf and then you've got the smtp settings for all your email tasks and then your maintenance stuff right and a good thing here is backup and restore if you're about to move i could click backup and hit allow and this is going to make a nice simple backup and then when i go to restore it it will ask me for that backup of that zip i just click it it will restore it and everything i had configured is now restored that's really nice i love it when services have that sort of option so that's well us and that's the overview right <laughs> it gets pretty straightforward and it's very um yeah really simple and easy to use right it's this is the thing i like about apps like this they do one thing and they do it right so let's walk you through creating a new subscription and then i'm going to show you how you can go and get this set up for yourself so if we hit new subscription we can just add a subscription name i'll just call this test for fun and this will be fifty dollars and let's say this was coming out as american currency right you had an american uh, subscription for something then you could set that as us dollar if you would want otherwise i can just have it as new zealand dollar or whatever i like the other cool thing about this is yes you can upload the logo or you can just search for it which is great so you don't even have to like download it upload it to your server for it to be here you can just search for it and since and it's it's based off this name so let's change this to i don't know let's just put google right like it was a google subscription or something if i click on uh, if i close this and hit the search again you'll see that hey look here's some logos for you or if i had youtube right last one just to show you hit search there we go youtube I can click that we have our logo nice and easy and then that will be saved on your server and then we've got the payment method so they've got a bunch here right let's just say this is a direct debit right and if you've got multiple users this is where you can say hey look whose subscription is this for you could be setting up on behalf of a family member however you like since uh TikTok is the only one well i have my wife's account on here but we're not part of the same household so i don't see her account but if we, if i configured it that way then she would also pop up under here category again if there's a category here that is missing you can always add it like i showed you before let's just say this is a cloud service and you can enable the notifications for the subscription so if you have that set up to send those emails out this is where that's um toggled and then you can say hey look uh, let me know you know two days before i'm not going to worry about that though before i forget we under the next payment so this is where we're saying when's it next going to come out and then it's just going to do it monthly from there on out or however you have it configured so let's say it's going to come out on the 14th right and then it's going to be monthly from there we'll hit save and now if we look for youtube here it is right and then if we go to the calendar we should see it yep there it is youtube it's coming out here and then under statistics we can see it's also there and i don't want that there so i can come under here and i can hit delete and we'll hit okay and it's gone so if you like the look of wellos i am now going to show you how you can get it all set up for yourself so i have created my own documentation for this which i am going to show you uh but i just want to show you their github repository as well because this is where i got my information from and if we scroll down a link to this will be in the description but if we scroll down they have a demo website so if you're keen on just trying it yourself and playing around before you get it deployed have a go on their demo website username and password's there and the database gets reset every two hours so just have a play around if you want to and this is my documentation website if you haven't been to this before most of the content that i cover on my youtube channel um, i have all the documentation for it on this website a link to this will also be in the description so all we're doing is we're just going to use this docker compose file for deploying our service and it's actually really straightforward and easy to do and if you would rather just read through this stuff i it's pretty much explained exactly what you need to do to get this all working yourself so we're going to jump onto my sandbox server which is my testing server and we'll get another version of this up and running eh so let's ssh to my sandbox server uh, there it is there so we'll grab that command and hit enter and there we go so we've connected to my server now let's just clear the screen up a little bit and i always have my uh, compose files under a folder called docker and then in there i just make the directory for the service i'm deploying right so it'll be wellos and then we'll change directory into there and it's just an empty directory nice and easy so what we're going to do is first we're going to make that docker compose file right so docker compose .yaml. and we need to grab the compose file from my documentation so coming over to here all we need to do is click the little copy button on the right hand side of here and we paste that in so 
let's just cover this really quick. So we're creating a service and it's just one service, nice and easy, and it's going to be called Wellos, right? And it's going to be using the latest version of Wellos every time. Now, if you'd rather attach a specific version, then you can feel free to change that. And the port that mine's going to be running on is 8282. Now, the reason they have it on port 8282 is because generally 8282 isn't a port you would typically use. Uh, so it should be available, is what I'm saying. If 8282 has been used, feel free to change that to whatever you need. Now, listen to me really quickly. If this is new to you, do not change this. This is within the container. It has nothing to do with what you're exposing on the host. Only this side here does. So just change this. You change this, you're going to break things. Feel free to change the time zone to the time zone in your area. So for me, if I wanted to change it, I could change that to Pacific and then Auckland, and that would be a good time zone for New Zealand. And we're going to use two uh, bind mounts here, right? So our data persists. So that means if the container ever got removed, you could stand it up again and it would be, you know, perfect. So we're going to have a database, right? And then we're also going to have a directory for where the logos are stored. So even when you search for those logos, they get saved there. And what we want to do is we want to manually make these first, okay? We don't want to leave that up to Docker. Like if we run this without making these directories first, Docker will actually make these directories for us, but they'll be owned by root. And what happens there is you can get permission issues because the container wasn't deployed by root, right? And then we've got a uh, restart, right? So this is always good to have. So it just means if your server restarts for whatever reason, this container will auto restart as well. It won't um, stay stopped. Simple, right? So let's save that. And then if we do an ls in that directory, that's all we should see at this stage. Now, coming back to my documentation, scrolling down, we can see what we need to do. And I note it here, we need to manually make those directories, right? So you can just copy this command back to the server, paste it in, do an ls again, and now you should have those two directories. And believe it or not, that's all you need to do. So what we can do now is do a docker compose up hyphen d. So this is just saying, hey, look, there's a compose file in this directory. Please run it up and run it in detached mode, which means that it will just run in the background. We can close down this SSH session and the container will continue to run. So let's hit enter. It's going to pull the latest image of Wellos. So we'll just let it do its thing. There we go. So that's done. And we can see it's also created a network and the container is all up and running as well. Now, if we just check that compose file, we can see that we can access it on that port 8282, right? Or whatever you set it as. So we need to connect to the server's IP address that's running it, right? This host machine and this IP address. And the IP address of my server is 128. So let's grab that and remember port 8282. So let's put this in here. So 8282 and we'll hit enter. And we should get Wellos, which we do. And honestly, it's, it is that straightforward. It's, it's very easy when you're working with Docker and stuff like that. So we can make a username here. I'm going to zoom down a bit because the page was kind of breaking a little bit when it was zoomed in. Change your main currency. Let's just put US dollar. And this is, see the restore database? If you had that backup, that's where you could do it. And we'll hit register though. I don't want to remember this password. So Nick. And there we go. This is Wellos, we're in. And everything I was showing you before, you can now start adding your subscriptions and away you go. So that is Wellos, that is a subscription tracker that you can self-host using Docker. Uh, I hope you find it useful. And if you do use it, feel free to let me know um, how you're going with it. Also, if you have any questions, you get stuck or you just want to talk, uh, jump into our Discord, a link will be in the description. There's about uh, nearly 500 of us in there now so yeah feel free to just come in and have a chat also uh, ask in the youtube comments as well more than happy to help if you need it check out the merch store everything in the link in the description if you're wanting to support but besides that a simple like and a subscribe will do and i will end it here thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video have a good one goodbye